Welcome to the CCFR Radio Podcast, your source for news, updates, and stories from the CCFR. Welcome to episode 98 of the CCFR Radio Podcast. I am your host, Tracy Wilson, filling in for Rod Giltaka while he is away. Today on the podcast, I'm going to give you an update on Rod's condition. Don't laugh at me. I'm reading my my verbiage here because, of course, Rod's not here and I'm trying to fill in his job, which is, needs big shoes. Uh, so today on the podcast, I'm going to give you an update on Rod's condition and a brief recap on the French debate last night. I call it the big game. I'm also going to give you some more information on the election booklet campaign, and I've got one of the booklets here to show you, and I'll be spilling the beans on the other half of the CCFR's huge election 2021 project today. But before we get started, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Vortex, the force of optics. Thanks to our friends over at Vortex Canada for continuing to support the CCFR and our podcast. We sincerely appreciate it. You can check out all of their great products at vortexcanada.net. That's vortexcanada.net. And also a huge thank you to our friends at the Saskatchewan Rivers chapter of Safari Club International. We truly appreciate all their support and you can check out all their great work at saskriversci.com. That's saskriversci.com. Let's get started. So um, first, we're going to talk about Rod. So as you can see, he's not here with me today. And that's because he is just finishing up uh, today, actually, week three of his radiation uh, treatment therapy. Um, I'm just going to be honest. We did have a little bit of a glitch last weekend. I was uh, at the Odell Industry range day and I got a message from Rod's wife. I called immediately to find out what was going and there were some complications. As you know, Rod is suffering from throat cancer right now and the tumors in his neck had actually swollen up and caused some inflammation and they were pressing on his arteries and it was sort of restricting the flow of blood, which made him feel really awful. He was um, uh, nauseous and had a terrible headache and it just they knew something wasn't right. So he spent a day and a half in emergency getting that taken care of. Uh, they've given him some really strong steroids to, you know, kind of uh, slow down that swelling and deconstrict the arteries so the blood can flow better. So things are a little better. He is feeling a little bit better, um, but of course he's in week three. So he's about halfway through his radiation treatment. Um you know, hopefully once he gets stabilized, we can explore the other options with the immunotherapy. And on that, that note, a huge thank you to everyone who uh, contributed to our fundraiser. Um, I know Rod put out a special thank you message and there just isn't enough words to explain how much it means to everybody and especially to his family. So big thanks on that. All right. So let's talk about the French language debate last night. I wrote some notes here. I call this the game. So O'Toole did something really clever. Of course, the liberals are famous for their word games. They invent things like assault style rifles. By definition, if something is blank style, it's not the thing it's purported to be styled after. So by doing that, it's, um, you know, it, it's what O'Toole did last night was sort of a game back on the liberals and they, they're going to have to eat crow and actually define what an assault rifle is. As you know, actual assault rifles were banned back in 1977. Those are firearms that had full auto capability. Um, so when he was asked last night by Trudeau in Montreal, the epicenter of gun control in Canada, if he was going to, you know, he accused him of overturning an assault rifle ban. And Trudeau said, well, no, I'm not going to overturn an assault rifle ban. He wasn't talking about assault style rifles, which is what Justin Trudeau banned. So it was clever. It's I know it's got a lot of people confused, um, including journalists. I know my phone's been ringing off the hook all morning and everybody's, you know, confused what he's talking about. Um, as an Air Force veteran and a former serving member of the Canadian military, O'Toole knows and you and I know that actual assault rifles are not five round maximum semi-auto um, guns like what we're using to go planking. So... In any event, I think it was a little bit clever. 
Um, it's uh, kind of got everybody in a tailspin. And it's a perfect way to show liberals that, yeah, words do matter. So we should get that right. Anyways, the English language debate is coming up on September 9th. So I will have a recap on that. Um, but that brings us to the liberal platform. Of course, this is a government that was already, you know, ruling in Canada. Um, there was basically nothing that they were prevented from getting done because they're being propped up by both the NDP and the bloc. Yet they somehow felt it was necessary to call an election in the middle of the fourth wave of a, you know, global pandemic. You've got this Delta beta, whatever variant um, surging and, you know, problems with their allies in Afghanistan and the economy is tanking and everything's kind of going on. But hey, why not have a vanity election to try and have a power grab? So he called this election. It took him 18 days into the campaign to even get his platform out, which led people to believe like why was what was the reason for even calling the election? And it's pretty clear it was just to gain more power and obtain a majority government. So there's three key issues in the liberal platform pertaining to gun owners that really matter. Number one, there's been a big shift in what they're talking about as far as this, um, the May 1 OIC gun ban. Uh, before they said the buyback program, which would be compensation for forced confiscation, um, that it would be optional not mandatory and that gun owners would have the choice if you just wanted to keep your property locked away in your safe you would be free to do that that has changed so now they're saying that it's either mandatory to turn your firearms into the liberal government for destruction and they'll decide if and what they pay you or you are going to be required to deactivate it which means getting it destroyed yourself and the average cost for deactivation of a firearm a legal deactivation is about $500 each. So either way, they're looking to destroy your guns. So that that's a distinct policy change that's new. So we're going to have to watch that. They've really started screwing around with Megs too. Um, they, they're talking about the fact that right now in, in Canada, in some rifles, you know, there's different, depending on the caliber and the type of firearm, there's a different magazine capacity allowance. So just for today's discussion, um, you know, standard rifle would be five rounds. And of course, the magazines that you buy for those guns often come from other countries where they don't have the same ridiculous restrictions on magazine capacity. So in Canada, we're required to put a pin in it, which is a, a, a rivet type device that prevents you from loading more than the maximum allowable amount of cartridges. So they're, they're saying that's not good enough anymore. Not that this has ever been a problem or that they've seen any uh, problem with gun owners popping out their, their pins or their rivets, which is already illegal. Um, they're, they're deciding that's not enough. They want them to be permanently altered to only accept the legal number of bullets. So this is going to impact about 50% of the guns Canadians own, Canadians own now, according to Phil O'Dell from O'Dell Industries, who, of course, is an expert on the topic. Um, the problem with that is not all firearms that are manufactured are manufactured with Canadian regulations in mind. So going forward, we would, of course, be looking at gun manufacturers and expecting them to create a firearm or create magazines for them specific to the Canadian market, which isn't really big enough to do. So this sort of magazine ban is actually a really complex issue that's going to impact everybody right down the line from sports shooters to hunters to collectors. Um, so yeah, all bad. It's like a, a mag ban is what I'm calling it. Um, they've also promised $1 billion. I almost wish I had a, you know, the, um, the one billion. Um, they've promised a billion dollars in funding for handgun bans for cities and towns. So this, again, is shifting the responsibility for a handgun ban over to municipalities. But what does that even look like? We've discussed this before. And what that would be would be a change in the existing storage and transport regulations for handgun owners. So basically, it would be a change in those regulations, meaning it would only impact legal gun owners. Gangbangers, criminals would be completely exempt from this. So this is popular in some areas, of course, like Montreal, 
uh, Toronto. John Tory says he wants it. And although they would be putting that responsibility on the shoulders of those mayors to do it, they'd be backing it up with a billion dollar fund of taxpayer money. So crazy, right? Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I think that we've, we've got to keep an eye on that. It's very important uh, that we combat these issues. I think we knew already what a Trudeau government means to gun owners, and it means the end to our sport. Um, and I think that's even more apparent now. So we're going to do something about it. And I'm going to be needing some help here because, of course, with Rod being off with his situation and, you know, we don't have a lot of days left in the campaign. We're the third today. So we're down to 17 days. I'm going to be hitting the road probably after the weekend. And I've got this um, this booklet here. So this was the program that Rod and I discussed with you. And if you look at this, it's very nice. I hope you can see it. It's nice and shiny. It's glossy. And it says, meet your liberal team. Now, don't mind the website right now. It's not up and running. This is a sneak sneak peek for you guys. But that will be up and running um, either later today or tomorrow or in the next couple of days. But these aren't going to hit hands until at least Monday. Um, but it says, meet your liberal team. And it looks like a real nice piece of liberal propaganda. However, when you open it, you have, I don't know if you can see this, you've got pages and pages of liberal failure and misery and terrible policy and all the ways that they've hurt Canadians. It's a gorgeous piece of uh, propaganda that's sort of disguised as pro-liberal, but it's not. Talks about the economy. It isn't necessarily um, gun related because I think the majority of Canadians are pretty satisfied with the, the measures we've already got. But it talks about their incompetence, their corruption, their failed economic policies, their failed pandemic response, um, you know, and then it, it kind of gives you uh, some key takeaways. So some some food for thought for Canadians. So, yeah, we're we're I literally have multiple publishers right now um, printing off hundreds of thousands of these. I'm going to be focusing my own personal efforts largely in the GTA and on the way. Of course, there will be um, areas on my on my journey like uh, Kingston. I'm going to go and visit Mark Gerritsen's, Gerritsen's riding um, and make sure that his voters and constituents are well aware of his corrupt, incompetent government. At the same time, I'm going to head over to the GTA. There's a lot of ridings there. And it's funny, the... When I compare the numbers from the 2019 election to how they're polling right now, the traditionally vulnerable liberal ridings have increased a lot. So things have changed. So it's sort of an evolving situation. Um, Pam Damoff is um, fighting for her seat there. It's pretty much neck and neck. Um, Miriam Monsef in Peterborough, of course, uh, who... Uh, did a video last week uh, on, on television appealing to her brothers in the Taliban. She um, She's tanking right now. I think she's probably going to lose her seat, and rightfully so. So there's going to be a bunch of writings that I'm going to hit, but I, you know, I'm one guy. I can't get everywhere. So I'm going to be appealing to you guys for help. And what I'm going to do is along my journeys, I'm going to be talking to firearm retailers, and I'm going to be dropping off boxes of these pamphlets along the way because – I can only do so much in a 10 day period. And that's pretty much the maximum I can give to go on this um, this journey. So I'm going to be relying on you to stop in at your local retailer. I will be publishing a list of where you can go and pick these up. But even if you went in and picked up a bundle of 100 and made the effort to go out into your riding, pick a neighborhood and just go and, and, and put this, you know, in the doors and mailboxes of Canadian voters. I think it's important information in here. Um, every single page has the QR code. So if people say, well, I don't know if that's true, they can scan it and find out. You know, that's one thing. We don't lie, right? So, so yeah, I'm going to be looking for your help. Watch for me to post a listing of where you can pick yours up. Like I said, it doesn't have to be a lot. You don't have to spend days and days doing it. If everybody went and picked up 100 of these and got them out there, I think it would make a big difference. So, I'll be bouncing back to you with all that information. Um, if you're not following me on social media, make sure you do. Uh, we'll also put it in the newsletter. Now, we've got another half of that because at the same time, this is 
printed reading material. And this is great. We're going to get this into the hand of, a, of at least a quarter million Canadians. I'll be shipping some out to the West Coast in uh, in BC. There's some, some areas there I want to tackle as well as out to the East Coast. Other than that, pretty much focusing on the GTA. Um, but of course, that doesn't reach everybody, right? And we need to find a way to reach Canadians all across the country. So there's different forms of media you can use. And the other piece to our election project is for um, is, is radio and TV. So this is incredibly expensive. It's a massive undertaking. It's a very delicate message that needs to get put out there. Um, but we need to get it in front of more people. And I I really felt, Rod and I talked about this extensively, we felt that it was important to combat that negative liberal messaging that was going out about, um, you know, keeping communities safe. And we all know what they're doing and the measures that they're implementing only affects legal gun owners. So we've got a fantastic 30-second TV commercial uh, with great imagery and a wonderful positive message about combating actual crime and how the liberals have failed to do that. Um, that will be airing on TV channels. So it'll be on CTV. It'll be on Global. It'll be on TSN. It's going to air during the football games because that's when Canadians are gathered around the TV as a family and we'd have their undivided attention. We're also launching um, a 15 second version and a 30 second version of a radio commercial. And this will go out on sort of the news talk platforms in Ottawa and Toronto, like here in Ottawa at CFRA. I forget what it's called in Toronto, but I'll, I, I'll get back to you on that. I'll put out a web story with all this information in it for you and some samples, the, the commercials themselves. Um, but yeah, we've got to get these commercials out. So in the Toronto area, the GTA and in Ottawa, we're going to be putting out these uh, radio commercials that will really speak to Canadians. Just a short, simple message about Justin Trudeau and his team's failure to address actual crime and violence. And there's a cost to it. You know, I say it all the time and it's in human lives. So, yeah, so there's lots going on. So we're hitting you with the we had the billboard project. We've got the printed material project that's going to be boots to the ground, door knocking, mailbox dropping. And then we've got TV and radio commercials coming out. So we're hitting it in every medium possible. The last message I want to give to you about sort of election stuff is um, it's it's more important than ever. I know I feel like I say this every election, but I feel like it's really this is it. This is really it for gun owners is you've got to um, take some time, if you can, and give some time to your local candidate. If you're not into door knocking, I get it. Sometimes, you know, talking to people in a public setting, it might be awkward. You don't know what to say. That's okay. There's lots of jobs for you at your local um, EDA. So find your gun-friendly candidate, whether it's CPC, preferably, or whoever, um, and go see what you can do to help. They need people... <clears throat> excuse me, to install the big signs on street corners. They need people to drop off lawn signs at supporters' homes. Um, there's people, to, you know, to man the phones, to hand out propaganda. There's all kinds of stuff that needs uh, to be done. So, And they are desperate for volunteers. Remember, the Liberal team is a well-funded, you know, well-oiled machine, and we have to compete with that. We really have to get this stuff out. So I would recommend everybody, even if you can just do a couple hours, you know, maybe a couple hours a week over the next couple of weeks, find your local EDA um, and and get in there and volunteer. Stop by the campaign office and say, hey, I'm here to help. How can I help? It's imperative. And uh, yeah, that's my positive messagery. So once again, just to recap, we will be coming back to you again after the English language debate, um, of course. We'll probably see more talk about um, gun control in that. And um, that's about it. So thanks again for everyone's uh, help and support uh, with the Rod Project. And uh, we're going to do our best to get him back on here so you're not stuck listening to me. Um, just to end off, a big thank you to our friends at Saskatchewan Rivers Chapter of Safari Club. Thank you so much for all your help. And to Vortex Canada the force of optics. I am Tracy Wilson, signing off. This is another episode of the CCFR Radio Podcast. Remember, if you don't stand up for your own ability to own and use firearms, who will? Join the CCFR or donate right now at www.firearmrights.ca.